Hello, this is CJ Radoon and the Prime Sports Network coming to you from rotowire.com. Want to make sure that you tune in here at the Prime Sports Network for the entire Formula One season to get the top headlines, updates, and all the F1 racing coverage all season long. If you want to ask any questions or have any comments, feel free to let us know in the comments section and we'll make sure to incorporate your feedback. Last week, or actually it wasn't last week, it was two weeks ago now, we had the first race of the season with the Bahrain Grand Prix. And, uh, you know, as predicted, Max Verstappen and Red Bull Racing came out hard, dominating. It's kind of expected as a result of the way that we saw things shaping out in testing. Plus, we all know that Max Verstappen and Red Bull were the favorites uh, in terms of the odds going into the, the this season and as far as championship favorites. They absolutely dominated last last season, as we talked about the last time. Uh, testing, they were quite fast, quite reliable, and that seemed to carry on right through into Bahrain. In fact, uh, Bahrain actually only featured two, two lead changes between Max Verstappen and teammate uh, Sergio Perez. Perez led three total laps the rest of them were were led by max verstappen and he ended up leading uh the to the win by over 10 seconds over over perez so a couple interesting things that came as a result of uh bahrain though obviously the red bull and max verstappen part was very predictable um secondly you know ferrari they they appear to be second in line you know leclerc uh, seems still seems to be the leader at ferrari over teammate uh, carlos Sainz jr uh, but unfortunately leclerc suffered a power issue so he ended up dropping out of the race so we really don't know uh from a full race perspective how competitive ferrari and leclerc are going to be though i do think it's safe to say at least early in the season that leclerc is going to still remain the team leader there and that if anybody from ferrari is going to challenge Red Bull and Max Verstappen <clears throat> for dominance, it's going to be Leclerc. So we'll be looking this week at Saudi Arabia to see if Leclerc, Leclerc and Ferrari can actually get to the finish. Uh, but the question as a result of Leclerc dropping out was, is Aston Martin for real? I mean, Fernando Alonso, just a storming qualifying, put his car on fifth position on the grid, uh, had an inspired drive in the final laps to actually get past Carlos Sainz and gra grab his first podium finish in, in his first race at Aston Martin. So Aston Martin last year was a midfield contender. Um, certainly seems to have taken a step forward. We saw signs of that in testing, and it looks like it's actually proving out here as we get into the season. So actually, we just had free practice one in, in Saudi Arabia as well. And Alonso does seem to be the real deal. Uh, he was third for some time uh, in, in Saudi Arabia in practice, and Lance Stroll actually jumped up there as well. They were th third and fourth in uh, free practice one. So right now, uh, after one session, that's not saying a lot. We still have to get through free practice two and qualifying. But right now, Aston Martin looks to be the second fastest in Saudi Arabia. So what does that mean for Mercedes? Uh, we were all anticipating Mercedes to continue their momentum at the end of 2022 right into 2023 and perhaps even be able to take a step forward eclipsing Ferrari to be able to challenge Red Bull. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're there yet. Um, a couple of uh, worrying signs coming out of Mercedes. I think both Hamilton and uh, teammate George Russell have said that the car is not where they need it to be. However, I would expect that to change once the season gets back to Europe. Uh, Mercedes, as we all know, is one of the best at developing their car throughout the season and getting the most out of it. So don't count Mercedes out yet. They are still third in the fight behind Ferrari and Red Bull, uh, but they're going to have some stiff challenges until they're able to get back on European soil and start uh, developing their car. And those challenges are going to come from, from Aston Martin and particularly Fernando Alonso. So the rest of the midfield battle, as it may be shaping up for 2023, that we have a four-team battle or a four-way battle at the front of the field, uh, the midfield battle is actually still very close. Uh, Alfa Romeo and Alpine, probably a little bit as pred predicted prior to the start of the season, prior to Bahrain, seem to be leading that midfield fight. We have Valtteri Bottas qualify, or I'm sorry, finish eighth, and Pierre Gasly on Alpine finish ninth. So both of them uh, picking up points in this first uh, this first race. But the real surprise, and this is my biggest surprise so far, at least from Bahrain, and even free practice one from Saudi Arabia, is Williams. Uh, Al Alex Alban in particular. Williams was at the caboose, or they were the caboose, at the end of the field in 2022. But they seem to have certainly taken a step forward here with Alex Alban. Alban finished 10th, picked up a point in Bahrain. 
he was actually in the top 10 in free practice one at Saudi Arabia as well. So if you're looking further down the order and certainly at the midfield battle for some values that you want to pick from a fantasy perspective, Alex Alvin might be one to look at this week at Saudi Arabia. So let's talk a little bit about Saudi Arabia. This is a unique course. It's a long one. It's over six kilometers long. Uh, however, there's really only one straightaway. Uh, it has 27 turns and one straightaway. It's absolutely fast. It's a street circuit. However, almost every single corner on the track is a blind corner and the track is constantly moving. That makes it extremely difficult to pass and extremely important to qualify well and maintain track position. So teams are going to have their days or their work cut out for them Sunday based on how they qualify on Saturday. And that means absolutely no mistakes on pit road. You cannot have a slow pit stop and your strategy for tires has to be spot on. If you lose, if you lose track position at this course, it's going to be very, very difficult to work your way back. You really only have one or maybe two spots on the track from a DRS perspective where you're going to be able to make a pass. And that's actually those DRS zones were actually what made the the race last year quite exciting. I mean, Max Verstappen was in the mix for the win at this course in both of its previous attempts. We expect him to be, if not dominating, in the mix for the win certainly this weekend as well for the third time that the series races here. Um, he won the race last year, and it, it was a DRS battle between him and Leclerc. I don't necessarily expect that we're going to see the same battle. He was over half a second faster per lap than uh, Perez here, uh, at least in free practice one. So we'll see how qualifying plays out, but I think it might be a cakewalk for Verstappen again, considering uh, his early pace, but uh, you know things have to play out from a qualifying perspective for him, and he has to avoid trouble all the way throughout the race distance on Sunday to make that happen. I'm not the only one <laughs> that thinks that that's going to happen. Unfortunately, the odds very much are are heading towards Max Verstappen this weekend, and in fact. They're not just heading toward Max Verstappen. They're heading toward Max Verstappen and Red Bull. Any way that you can get Max Verstappen in a bet, whether it's him himself or just Red Bull in general, the odds are going to be very, very slim. <laughs> For example, to have uh, Verstappen win and be the fastest qualifier, it's actually negative odds, negative 105 uh, via the DraftKings odds. Uh, to have Verstappen put in the fastest lap and the race win, that's about the only one I could find that's out there right now where you can get a Verstappen choice and have positive odds at plus 165. So uh, if you're going to do anything betting-wise and you're going to want to bet on the winner, Verstappen slash Red Bull are going to be the ones that you want to go with. You might want to go with Red Bull because that way you loop in Sergio Perez, who is also fast and was second fastest in practice, and that way you also get Verstappen as well. But you're going to want to combine that with either the fastest qualifying position or the fastest race lap. Certainly, uh, top in qualifying is going to be a little bit slimmer odds. It's a little bit more predictable, whereas the fastest lap is a little bit more unpredictable because typically those come at the end of the race and are subject to whatever happens during the race. So if you're feeling a little bit uh, ambitious, go for the fastest lap coupled with Red Bull Racing win. If you're feeling a little bit more conservative, go ahead and Ted, take Red Bull for the win as well as uh, top qualifier. You'll get some better odds there versus just going one off. The other one, uh, given what I talked about with the track being uh, a flowing street circuit and the barriers right on are, are whether or not you want to play the game as to whether or not a safety car is going to come out. Uh, you can almost guarantee a safety car is going to come out here. And odds reflect it, negative 700 to have a safety car appearance. So uh, it's almost free money, but again, you're not going to get a dollar for dollar return there in, in terms of, of your bet. So if you're going to go with the safety car prop, Definitely go ahead and take the yes on a safety car appearance. But again, it's going to be a negative 700. Again, I think this week it it seems to be all signs seem to be pointing toward Red Bull and in particular uh, Verstappen. Combine that with the fastest lap or the top qualifying position. And I think you're in the spot where you can try to make some money, uh, at least some some pennies back on your dollar here in this week's uh, anticipated to be a uh, very predictable um, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So with that, that's the Formula One uh, update for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix heading into this weekend. Again, I am CJ Radun of rotowire.com. 
Tune in here at the Prime Sports Network for top headlines, updates, and Formula One coverage all season long. And if you have any questions, uh, any comments, feel free to let us know. We'll be sure to incorporate those into future shows. And until next time, keep it out of the fence.